Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to handle the body of an HTTP POST request performed to an ASP32 running the HTTP web server async libraries. As target board I'm going to use an ASP32 uh, Fire Beetle board from DFRobot. So, in previous tutorials we have already covered how we can, for example, uh, specify that uh, a given route can only receive POST requests, uh, but we haven't yet covered how we can access the actual body uh, of POST requests. So we have seen how we can configure uh, route handling functions, but uh, in those route handling functions we did not have access to the body of a POST request. So, but before we jump to the to that part of the code, just as a quick um, sum up. Uh, we are going to recap uh, what we have been covering in the previous tutorials and how we set up the server. So basically you start by the includes that are needed to connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network and to set up the server. Then we need here the credentials of the Wi-Fi network and then we need an object to declare an object of class async web server which is used to do the configuration of the routes of our server. Moving on to the setup function, we start by opening a serial connection and then we connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network and at the end we print to the serial, uh, to the serial connection the local IP assigned to our SP32 in the network so we can connect to it from a client. So after that comes the interesting part which is where we are going to uh, take care of configuring a route and how to specify um, and we are going to specify how to handle the body of an HTTP POST request. So as we have been configuring routes before, we still use this on method of our server object, but we need to take in consideration that this method, method is overloaded, so it has uh, many versions that we can call with different number and types of parameters. And we are going to use uh, another overloaded version of this method that we have not yet seen in previous tutorials. So as, as before, uh, as first argument we need uh, to specify the route, um, the name of the route that will uh, receive the request and I'm going to call it slash post because we are going to handle post requests. After that we need to specify here what are the methods allowed uh, on this route and since we are going to, as already mentioned, uh, handle POST requests, I'm going to set that uh, this route only accepts POST requests. Then, what we have done in the previous tutorials would be passing as third parameter a route handling function. But the fact is that this route handling function only receives this async web server request object pointer that we cannot use to access uh, the body of the POST requests. So, um, Basically, this, this handling function will not uh, be useful for what we are trying to achieve here. Uh, the first, the first uh, approach would be probably to try to pass null here, because if we are not going to use this function, there's not, not much sense uh, in defining it. But the fact uh, is that at the time I've recorded this video, uh, if we pass null here in the route handling function, uh, the body handling function that we are going to declare below uh, will never execute. I'm not sure if this is a bug or if this is an undocumented behavior uh, because there's not much documentation uh, on this on this way of calling the on method but the, the fact is that we need to declare here an empty function if we don't need to do anything in this in this step of of processing the request and we cannot pass null here. So moving on to the fourth parameter, um, it's basically another callback function and this overloaded version of the on method uh, forces us to specify this uh, callback, uh, it, it accepts this callback uh, message so we need to specify what to pass here and this is a callback function uh, to handle file uploads. In this case uh, we are also not going to, to receive the upload of any files, I'm assuming a much simpler use case where we are going to just receive some textual content in the body of the request, so we don't need uh, to have any handling function here. Nonetheless, uh, although uh, this this uh, this uh, overloaded version forces to 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 have this parameter here, uh, in in uh, uh, we don't need to to actually pass or to specify a function here. Whereas in the route handling function, the framework doesn't behave well if we pass null here, 
uh, for this file upload uh, callback or for this file upload handling function, we can pass null here if we don't need it and the framework will just behave well and will still execute the body handling function. Again, uh, this was the behavior at the time I've recorded this video. I'm not sure why this is the behavior of, of this on method because it's not documented. Uh, but it is how it behaves and we need to be careful uh, because it's very tempting to pass a null here uh, and if we do that this won't work well and we also may think that if we cannot pass null here we also need to pass a callback here but actually here we can pass null. So uh, moving on to the fifth parameter it will correspond to the uh, to the body handling function and here indeed we need to pass a, a, a function that implements a behavior you want uh, to treat the body received in the post request. Uh, I'm going to use the C++ Lambda syntax like I usually do for the route handling function because this function will not be reusable so it can be an anonymous function declared here. Uh, we don't need to be declaring a name function because our code will be much bigger and there's no need for that. In terms of signature, pretty much like the, the route handling function needed to follow a predefined signature defined in a type uh, in the libraries. Basically, our our, route, our sorry our body handling function also needs to follow uh, a fixed signature, a fixed function signature. So, as first argument, it needs to receive also like the the route handling function uh, a pointer to an async web server request object, uh, and it, this makes total sense because of the following. Uh, when we are receiving a post request with a body, probably we want to check if the content uh, has the, the correct content type, uh, if the content is valid, and we may want to do a lot of checks or a lot of logic on top of it, and probably only after that we'll be able to know uh, what we want to return as an answer to the client. So it makes perfect sense that we also have access to this request object pointer here in this body handling function. So after we process the body, we can return um, the correct answer back to the client. So a second parameter, uh, this, this handling function will receive uh, the actual buffer with the body data, um, which is a pointer um, because this, this is uh, obviously a, a buffer with, with the bytes of the body. Uh, so just looking for this to this argument, we cannot, it's not very useful because we don't know the size of, of this array, of this buffer, uh, and we will not be able to, to read it properly. So this is why uh, the third parameter corresponds to the length of the of of these of this buffer that contains the data so we have the data and we have the length of of the data now we can obviously parse this this uh, body correctly uh, to finalize the signature i would like to mention these two parameters it's an index and a total and what i would like to say is that this is not clearly documented uh, in the framework, so it's not clear the purpose of these parameters, but from what I've been reading um, f uh, about some comments in the framework, uh, this should be used, uh, or the, the use for these parameters is when the payload uh, of the, 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 the body of the post request uh, exceeds a certain size, then um, these, these, uh, these data may be passed uh, in chunks uh, to this to this callback function. I haven't tested it yet uh, doing uh, big sizes for the payload of the post requests, so I cannot confirm this behavior because I haven't yet checked uh, what's the point that makes the, the this, this processing become chunked, uh, but this seems to be the, the behavior uh, that some people uh, that some people are, are commenting uh, in the framework in the HTTP web server libraries. So, but we are going to assume here for simplicity that our body is small enough to not become chunked. So I'm going to assume here that the length and the data contain the whole body uh, sent by the client. So assuming everything goes fine uh, to this point, uh, we basically just need to iterate through all the bytes uh, of the data of our data array and we are going to print them to the serial port uh, in order for later to be able to, to check the content on Arduino with the serial monitor. After that I'm just going to do this print here so if you want to test with multiple requests everything is nicely formatted 
and you can see the multiple requests here. And finally, as we would do uh, in, a, in a route handling function, uh, we should return back to the client the answer uh, to the request. And in this case, I'm just going to return a 200, indicating everything went fine and, and the request was correctly processed. Finally, we do what we usually do, which is calling the begin method on our server object. So from this point onward, the HTTP web server should be listening to incoming HTTP requests from clients. So this is it. The code is considerably simple as long as we are careful because of this uh, small detail. Uh, other than that, this is very simple and it, it makes perfect sense in terms of callbacks. It keeps the same structure uh, of uh, callback functions and it's very, use, uh, very easy to implement the logic we need to parse the body or to, to handle the body here. So I've already uploaded the code to my SP32, as you can see here. Uh, it's already connected to the Wi-Fi network and I already have my local IP here. And for testing, I'm using Postman. So Postman is an application, a very useful one that I've already used in previous tutorials that allow us to uh, make HTTP requests very easily. And we can very easily select here the method that we want to use, uh, the type of content, headers, authorization, etc. Uh, so this is the most, uh, the best tool, I would say, uh, to test this um, this kind of uh, of behavior and to send requests uh, to to an API and test the results. So I've already selected here post uh, as the method. I've already I'm already pointing to the to the slash slash post uh, route. And here selecting the body, I'm saying that it's it's raw some raw body and in textual format, something simple, and I'm going to send here an hello world message, as you can see here, with some exclamation points. And I'm going to send it. And as you can see here, I'm receiving the 200 response, which was what we defined in our code. So we know that everything went fine while processing our request. And if you go here to the, basically to the, to the Arduino with the SEO monitor, we can see here that the body, the payload, was correctly printed as we defined in our handling function. So I'm going just to, to test here another payload so, so we can check that everything is working fine. Again, another 200, as you can see here, and it is printing the payload as expected. So this is it. It's very simple to, to get starting using uh, processing the body of HTTP POST requests, and this should be very useful for many use cases where we want to send data to the to the server and i from my past experience i've seen a lot of people trying to do that trying to send some kind of content from a web page or, or from from the web uh, to the sp32 and people typically do something that it's not the most correct approach which is doing a get request and putting a lot of uh, parameters in the query parameters and passing the data that way. So that's not a very scalable or, or the correct way of doing it. If you want to send the, the data to the to the server, uh, typically if it's some, some structured data, you should use a post. Obviously then you need to take care uh, to be careful about how REST works, uh, what kind of methods to use. But usually a post request is more adequate than using a GET request uh, and sending data in the query parameters. So instead, you can use a post, you put your data in the body, you send a request, and then the SP32 takes care of processing the data of the body of the request. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.